Today we have Matthew here with us. This Hello. is Kayla's brother. Uh, and we have a little project to do. Um, we have this driveway light, which I'll give you a little close up here in just a little bit. That hasn't been working for quite a while. Uh, we're gonna take it down and we're gonna install a string of lights. Um, I'm gonna let you say a couple more words about it. All right, so the current setup we have is uh, it's 120 volts, but we wanna switch over to a low voltage, which is gonna require a transformer. Um, and there's some conduit that goes from this light into the unfinished area that goes underneath the driveway right here because of the unfinished area of the house and uh, so we're going to um, use that conduit but we're going to replace it with uh, low voltage wiring and we're also going to mount the transformer in there um, and then off of that we're going to probably add the string or the, the new lights what you mean, both ways or yeah i think both ways yeah so we're going to just pretty much add more lights and we're going to turn into low voltage and it's all going to be led and i think that's the game plan might be a couple other things on the list but great for now this is what we got sounds awesome let's get to work yes perfect i might need a shovel as well here i'll go get you one Nice. Wow. Nice job, Louis. There you go. Tester. Very good. Alright, we have no power there. Test this as well. Alright, we have no voltage. Okay. So there's no electricity. You can probably so. safely cut it. So we've pulled up uh, the old light that was there and you can see what is left is this wire cone out and it goes into this conduit right here. And this is the conduit that also goes inside the house in the unfinished area. It's just landscape wiring. And but that's where the low voltage is gonna go through, right? Correct. It's just low voltage, you can see right here, and landscape wiring. Um, and you just use it for exactly what it says. You can direct bury it? Yeah, you can direct bury. It's low voltage, so it's almost impossible to harm you. I'm not gonna say it can't, because then I'll get sued, but it's uh, it's very low voltage. Cut this part off. So now we have this one tail here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm gonna take our uh, diagonal cutters and cut right in between the two wires. So that allows us to pull the wires apart like this. And then we can cut one probably, you know, three quarters of the way down. It's just the idea so that you have a gradual increase in the size of the wire. So it's not, no jagged edges that are gonna get caught. So we're gonna bend this over. And we're gonna bend, we're gonna take this wire. Let's see, make sure you guys can see it. We got that little loop on it. We're going to take this wire and bend it over like so. And the idea is we're going to get electrical tape and tape this all and make sure that it's nice and smooth and pinch that over there. And that way that is nice and smooth and it's a gradual flow of increase, increasing size. We're going to take our electrical tape and wrap it around. Make sure the tape is tight. So right here, this is the end of the wire, uh, the one I looped over but I went a little bit further so that it makes that gradual, nice, you know, slope. And a little, little trick as well is that if you take the end of your tape and you fold it over itself like that, and then you flatten it, you have this little tail here that you can grab and use it to undo the tape because it can get pretty annoying trying to, you know, pick the end out. And that's pretty much that. We're gonna try and pull it in. All right, so one last thing I wanna show you guys before we do this is that um, originally we just had this coil on the ground like this. And what's going to happen is that it usually gets bound up on itself 
and uh, it gets the wire gets like real twisted. So a good way to preventing that is you just grab the whole coil of wire and you're pretty much just gonna walk it out while twisting it. Oh, unwinding it, I should say. You're just pretty much rolling out the wire like this so that when you do go to pull the wire from the inside, it's not, you know, it's kind of like a straight shot into it. It's not trying to come off the coil at, at an angle, which is where it would get caught. That's pretty much it. We're gonna roll about, about as much as we think we need to get inside. It's probably pretty close. So let's leave it like that and then we'll get started on the pull. All right, so we just pulled the new wire, the low voltage wire, uh, through the conduit outside into the house here using the existing cable that was there. We just taped onto it, like, like, like I showed you earlier. And the plan is we're gonna replace this wire, um, which is the same one that we just pulled out. And it goes to this junction box. And the plan is we're gonna put an outlet in here and we're gonna plug the transformer into this, into the outlet here and attach the low voltage wiring to that transformer. It's amazing how when you know what you're talking about, you're able to speak so much more fluently than Luis and I usually speak. <laughs> so this is something we just picked up from Depot. It was nothing really that special, but it comes with uh, six pathway lights, comes with 50 feet of cable, a transformer, and uh, a photo cell. But I think we're not gonna use that photo cell. Um, photo cells are meant uh, for controlling it based on how bright or how dark it is outside. All right, so we have uh, laid out all of our spikes. These spikes come with the package I just showed you guys, they just dig into the ground and then the light fixture sits on top of it. Um, and it's a pretty simple pattern we decided. There's um, we put a spike in between the line of each slab of concrete that the driveway is made out of. Um, so we have three going this way from one and then two more that way. And we have one right there I just showed you and along with two more over there coming with a six total that's all the package came with. Slaving away, look at her. <laughs> Just carrying an empty wheelbarrow everywhere. that the lights came with came with some really crappy connectors uh, which did not work at all and we initially connected them with these non weatherproof or watertight nuts so what we're doing right now is changing them to something that's um, a little bit more appropriate for the conditions that these wires are in <laughs> Alright, so same deal as outside, but now we're 
inside their crawl space. Um, this is the wire that we fed through the conduit, and it was a little bit short, so all we're doing is extending it um, with a, another piece of wire that we've had. Same idea here. Uh, we're just going to twist the wires together. Now, since we're inside, we don't need to, I'm not going to tape them up or anything. You use regular wire nuts. Now this wire is dead. We already confirmed that before. I was able to cut that. And then we're gonna put this insulation back. Staples have been removed. Now we're gonna open up this junction box. We're going to disconnect it. Do you want these things too? No, thank you. Do you have regular staples in there? No. Perfect. So as I was saying a little bit before that a flathead uh, gives you more, I guess, torque. You could tighten it um, a lot more compared to a Phillips head screwdriver. And uh, you know, the most important thing in electrical circuit is tight connections. Oh, you have good contact and you know, there's no loose connections or sparking or anything like that. Look how fancy in the crawl space. So this transformer right here has a little port in the back um, right here. It has it. And this plug that came with the set that we bought uh, we'll plug into it like so. So we're going to plug this together and plug it into the outlet and uh, hopefully it works. Well, since Mateo is here visiting us and he's an electrician, we're going to continue to take advantage of his skills. <laughs> And uh, we have a light on the corner of the house over here, which has, I don't know, for some reason, gotten a lot of water into it and has burned out the bulbs. So we're gonna go and change it for an LED light with a motion sensor instead of for something that has to be turned on all the time. So the existing one, like you said, is filled up with water. So we're gonna set up an extension ladder and we're going to replace the existing one up there with a new one, pretty much like you said. Um, actually, you pretty much covered it all for the most part. <laughs> I gotta redo, really I'm laughing. They're just happy to do work out there. So this is the light fixture that we took down. You can see it's very rusted and actually you can see the water in there shaking around. All right, so this is the light fixture that we decided to get. This is the motion sensor, motion, I mean the motion activated uh, LED light fixture. Uh, and we're gonna be taking down the old one that's up there and replacing it with this. It's got 100 degree, 180 degree range of motion detecting. It is 1600 lumens, which means the brightness. This is how bright it's going to be. It was sent to us by Defiant. <laughs> as a test. Uh. We're not sponsored by Defiant.
That concludes our video on installing driveway lights and a motion sensor light on the house. I've been watching TV the entire time, and I'm really pleased with your work. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You're very work. welcome. Send me the bill. <laughs> we'll do. And it will be in the mail shortly. <laughs> <laughs>